Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching all Shonen Jump anime through the, the current, present, past, and future. Starting with Gintama and currently on a rotating schedule, Jujutsu Kaisen and Kuroko's Basketball. And today we're here to talk about uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. It has been a bit. But we are here to talk about episodes 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Right, Zen? Yes, sir. And we're almost done with Jujutsu Kaisen, actually. At least in terms of season one. We do still have to see the movie. But we're getting close to it. Yeah, we're getting pretty close. The movie's so good. I can't wait to watch the movie. Yeah, I can't wait. I've never seen the movie again, and I can't wait to finally figure out all the parts that confused me while reading Jujutsu Kaisen to be, <laughs> oh, that's what they were talking That's who the fuck that guy is. <laughs> I'm ready for it. All right, Zen, let's begin. Episode 11, Narrow Mind. Thank God that all Jujutsu Kaisen titles are so short after going through Kintama. <laughs> Narrow Minded, Zen, tell us what happens in episode 11. So Nanami and Maito are finishing their battle. Uh, we get to see what Nanami's overtime ability is, which is it gives him a big boost when he officially is working overtime. Uh, the battle concludes when Nanami kind of collapses the tunnel that they're in. Um, Maito goes to avoid it, but then Nanami cuts his leg off and leaves, uh, hopeful that the debris killed him. Yuji and Junpei are kind of bonding a little. Um, Junpei recognizes that Yuji is a Jujutsu sorcerer because Mahito told him about the little symbol, like what the symbol means. Um, they kind of start bonding a little over like movies and stuff, and they go back to his place. And... Uh, after the mom invites them there, and they all kind of just like hang out and have a good time, and you know, for Junpei, that's like a like a nice moment for him. Um, Nanami goes back to get medical treatment because he gets all fucked up from his fight with Maito. Um, eventually, they are kind of concluding their dinner and everything, and Junpei kind of has this like little bit of a heartwarming moment with Yuji and all. Um, eventually, Yuji leaves, and the mother is killed by a cursed spirit that is after a Sukuna finger, which was planted in the building. Um, Nanami and Yuji are about to go after Mahito, and then Nanami is like, I don't want to, I don't want to put Yuji in a position where he has to kill people. Because, you know, the the things that Mahito uses to fight are technically humans. Junpei finds his dead mother. Uh, and Mahito, I believe, is like, tells him that, oh, the, the bullies did this. You know, they, they put this finger here, and this finger is what got your mom killed. It was all their fault. So he goes to the school to kill them. It's basically like a school shooter moment. Um... Junpei walks in, and the only people who are still awake are the people he wants to kill, basically. Uh, he uses his new abilities that he got from Maito, which allow him to summon like a, a jellyfish Shikigami, which I believe is named Moondregs. Uh, and he goes to kill one of the bullies, who is then saved at the last minute by Yuji, who is trying to figure out what happened. And then he kind of has a little face-off with Junpei, and then the episode ends. Mm-hmm. That's episode 11. So, I really like this one. I like the end. Like I said, previous uh, episode, I really like this fight between um, Nanami and Mahito. Um, I like the way it ends. Especially, like, the way he just kind of goes, like, okay, we're done here. And he <laughs> he just, like, casually starts to walk away, leaving him going really confused until he's like realizes, like, he, like, catches him off guard with how nonchalant is, like, well, okay, it's over. Overtime's done. Uh, if you survive, 
I hope you don't survive. Goodbye. And then he goes, what? And he goes, like, whatever. I can just run. And then he hits him in the leg. He's like, oh, you're a bastard. <laughs> he gets him that yeah, way. Yeah, he's like, ah, you tricky bitch. Yeah, you tricky little bitch. And then it turns out that um, he can't survive and he learns. Again, the continuing terribleness of Mojito is that no matter what, he always fucking survives. Yeah, dude's like a cockroach. He always comes back. Yes, and it's very annoying whenever he does. Um, so I liked that bit right there. I liked Yuji and Junpei hanging out. Um, I kind of liked it because it's actually trying to... I know you see a lot of people kind of say this around. I know I know it's a bigger issue in video games, but they also say it a lot in like comic stuff. Is that how come no one ever actually tries to... And they always say it in a very flippant manner, so I'm not trying to give these people any like credit. But they always say, like, how come people no one ever tries to like talk? to the bad guys or something like just actually try and see them out because usually the best kind of villains that are kind of made don't really necessarily seem evil and if they actually just had a conversation like a regular person then this entire situation could have been avoided and that's actually kind of what happens here where he's just so nice to him that it catches him off guard and it's like a dude dealing with someone who's actually genuinely nice and wants to be his friend for the first time and it's actually kind of setting him straight, which is very similar to what he's kind of going with um, Mahito, where it's kind of dealing with someone who wants to be his friend, but it's leading him down like a who someone he assumes wants to be his friend, but it's leading him down a dark path, and it's someone who wants to have him embrace kind of the thoughts that he's always had of like getting back against these people, like why are these people treating me like such shit? You should just obviously fight back against them. And usually as someone who's like, you can definitely fight back against some of the people that you don't like, but you don't have to actually go, like, all crazy murder. Like, when he gets back at the teacher, he's like, well, you obviously don't like him, right? He's like, oh, yeah, I, I didn't. And you actually took care of him in a matter where it didn't end with him dying. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of, I like, I always like that kind of relationship that they started here. I also really like seeing his mom, seeing his home life. They do a very good job of setting up a potential happy ending for this character. And then that reveal of the cursed finger on there kind of just drains it all away from you. <laughs> yep, it's a real uh, a real kick in the teeth when that yeah. spirit shows up behind the mom. It is, and Jujutsu Kaisen is very good at this feeling of like making you feel like things are going to be okay. And then they immediately make sure you know it's not okay. Actually, it's the worst possible scenario you could imagine. <laughs> They're very good at doing that. So yeah, uh, and especially the way the, mo the mom kind of gets taken out. It's real fucked up. There's a, lo the, a lot of the horror aspects of it is on display here with how he finds her. And how he's just clearly not in a right... He's very... He's very... He's being manipulated and it's being shown and that kind of helps guide him to see understand why he's doing what he ends up doing and why he's being pushed too far and like you said it's very similar to like a school shooting kind of sense of going into the mind of a character who's basically reached their boiling point and seeing that point kind of come up and yeah and i also really like that he attacks people with jellyfish stuff <laughs> i forget is this uh either this episode or the next one does he show off why he has the hair the way he has it uh, for the scar mark, that is the next one, I believe. Okay, okay. Um, but I really like that, uh, scene as well, but we'll talk about it for the next one. But yeah, I thought this was a very good episode. It's showing them, it's show, it's a lot of good character pieces, because it's a lot of showing how much of a piece of shit Mahito is, and then showing how good of a person, uh, <laughs> a Yuji is. What do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it's a good episode. I mean, this whole arc is... It's tough to talk about it without getting through to the end because so obviously some major shit happens. Um, but it it's very good at, at pulling the heartstrings the whole way through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's got that, that good flow to it that you want from an arc. Yes. <sighs> All right. Let's talk about this one. No oh, man. Episode 12. <laughs> it just gets sadder. And there's no happiness from this point on. <laughs> the that episode was the last glimpse of joe actually no there it comes a little bit later episode 12 to you someday it was a 12 episodes then tell us what it's about so yuji uh continues his little 
kind of... Well, okay, actually, it starts with a little bit back in the past, where um, we kind of see Nanami and them talking, and usually, like, I'm going to go to the school. The limo driver man, whose name I don't remember, it's like the only Jujutsu Kaisen character I could never place his name. <laughs> uh, uh, it's like, I don't want you to, and usually, like, I don't give a shit. Uh, and then we see him rescuing the teacher again. Uh, Yuji and Junpei kind of start fighting a little, and Junpei's fighting the jellyfish, and it's not really doing anything. All the attacks are kind of bouncing off. Um, Junpei reveals that he can use the jellyfish with, like, poison attacks. Um, he launches both of them out of a window, and they're shockingly fine for, uh, how squishy of a human Junpei is. Um, we get to see a little bit of uh, Yuji kind of using the teaching that he got from Gojo, where he's like, you know, when you're fighting a Shikigami user, don't fight the Shikigami, fight the user. Uh, so he's kind of rushing Junpei down. Um, and they kind of have the... They, they do a lot of, like, curse dialogue here, where they're like, oh, you know, you... People have hearts, but you know, if you get cursed, blah blah blah, like someone, someone did something awful to your family, basically. Um, Yuji lets Junpei attack him, and lets himself get hit by the stingers, to kind of try to break through to him, and he offers to take him back to Jujutsu High and help him, and you know, help find who killed his mom, and like try to try to save him. And then right as he does so, Mahito walks down the stairs. Um, Junpei initially defends Maito, and then Maito attacks Yuji. Um, then he places his hand on Junpei's shoulder, and then uses Idle Transfiguration to turn him into some kind of weird little crocodile thing. Um, he Yuji begs Sukuna to take over and help. Uh, Sukuna refuses, and both he and Maito laugh at Junpei while Junpei hold, or uh, laugh at Yuji while Yuji holds Junpei's dying body. Um, Yuji kind of has a little breaking moment here where he's like, oh right, these are curses, not people. And I need to treat them as such. Um, we get a little a little image of Yuji like having a, a dream of Junpei being with him and Nobra and uh, Megami, which fades away when Junpei is now dead. Uh, he starts attacking Maito, and Maito's like, oh, I'm fine. You can't hit me, because you have to hurt my soul to hurt me, and then he starts to bleed. Like, he gets a nosebleed from the punch, and he realizes that Yuji can damage his soul. Uh, we get a really cool shot of Yuji, where he's, like, silhouetted. It's just all in black and white. Uh, yeah. Where he's, he's going to kill him. It's such a good shot. So they good. have quite a big fight throughout the school. Uh, Mahito keeps using Idle Transfiguration to turn his body into different weapons and stuff, like a blade arm and a drill arm. And he and Yuji are fighting quite a bit before... Uh, eventually, Mahito gets the upper hand, and um, Nanami arrives right at the last minute to save him. And the two kind of team up and say that they're going to finish him off right now together. And then we have a Juju Stroll, which is just a bunch of little guys, transfigured human beings, playing with the pop-up pirate, which I remember most from Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah! The little barrel with the plastic knives. Yes, yes, that's what I remember it most. Okay, this episode, man, oh, this arc is so good. First of all... Gotta hand it out for Yuji being one of my favorite types of protagonist because he sees a jellyfish and his immediate reaction is, I'm going to fucking throw hands with this jellyfish. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he immediately starts punching it and going like, uh, uh. And he goes, oh, this doesn't work. And then eventually realizes, oh, yeah, punch him. And this, oh, my God, this fucking animation of... Him punching him, Junpei, through the window twice is so fucking funny. It's so good because they're like talking about like the cursed being. I can't live with a person who would be like 
I can't uh, imagine someone who would be so evil because they have to have no hearts because I can't imagine someone cursing me and my mom. And all this time, Yuji's trying to get him back to the light side. He's punching him so fucking hard through this window. He's like comically going through it. Like yeah, the, he's really beating the shit out of him. <laughs> he's 100% beating the absolute shit. It's unbelievable the ass whooping that this Jupe gets. And like you said, he really should have at least a couple broken bones here. Just, yeah, I mean, I think they show him, like, using the jellyfish to kind of break his fall. But, like, even then, man. No, even then. Going for a window. Getting his ass rocked. Yeah, 100%. Rocked completely. Um... I like the conversation that they have where he's eventually... The way that Yuji kind of just, like, gets him to his side isn't really him trying to justify the actions of the person. He's just saying, dude, that fucking sucks. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you then. I'm sorry that that happened to you. It shouldn't have happened to you, but there's still some hope for you if you just come with me and you come to Jujutsu High. And I think you can find someone that you can be with. Like, it's not all the worst. Because Yuji's also someone who really doesn't have anyone at this point. Because he only had his grandpa. And now he's gone. So he is someone who has lost basically everything. Because that's what happened to him. Is that the friends that he did have, he can't hang out there anymore. But he was still able to find a new life. And it turns out, like, even if bad things happen to you, like, everything that he's gone through. That doesn't mean necessarily that you should just, like, give up. There's still ways for you to find happiness if you continue just looking for them. And you will find them eventually. And that's the way he can kind of get to him. Not with him necessarily, like, condemning his actions. He's not trying to say, like, I don't... I'm not calling you evil for what you're doing. I'm trying to understand you and I'm trying to tell you that there's a better way of doing it than what you're doing now. And he actually does get him on his side on that. Because he actually talks to him like a... He doesn't give him, like, the full-on hero thing of, like, hero... People... Evil people do evil things. It's like, no, the actuality of it is is that sometimes good people do evil things too because they're just pushed too far. And that's equally as bad as anything else. But yeah, I really like that. I like the reveal of him showing off why he has the hair and how fucked up the bullies have really gotten him. Because uh, yeah, they've shown a couple times the bullying and it's just really fucked up with this. <laughs> you, re you at least really understand where Jupe is coming from because I also want to kill his bullies. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's terrible. It's really fucking bad. It's really bad. But yeah, I like that. And then, of course, when everything is looking its nicest and it looks like there's going to be a happy ending, up comes this motherfucking cockroach and immediately kills all joy <laughs> and transfigures yeah, him. Yeah, Mike such a good villain. He is, and he's, again, someone who I appreciate that, uh, even though I've said how much, oh yeah, you can kind of look at Junpei and you can see it for his ways and see it, there's no looking at uh, Mahito at all. All you see is like, he's not human. He needs to fucking die. <laughs> There's no hesitation here. This man does not need to continue living. And um, it's true. I also like that his plan completely backfires because I guess his original plan was I'm going to transfigure him and then he'll switch with uh, Sukuna and then he'll make a deal and then he doesn't realize that because he doesn't change immediately. So then he starts going like, what? Why doesn't he change? The Sukuna does not like know how to do it. Like he's trying to think of like, why wouldn't he want you? Not knowing that they've already, he's already made that deal. <laughs> yeah. Like Sukuna already has everything that he's want that he wants. So it just doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. He just wants to laugh at him and they have a good giggle at him as they just both fucking laugh at him eternally over and over again in a real fucked up looking way. Um, which is good. I also think that's a good way of showing, like, oh, yeah, he Sukuna didn't really need their help to escape. He was already kind of making deals himself and figuring out a way to kind of get himself out of there. <laughs> if anything, these guys are just trying to catch up to him, which is a kind of good way of, like, showing off, like, no, even in this kind of sealed state and with not every finger, he's still someone who is uh, making plans in the background and kind of fucking shit up for people. Uh, and then, yes, of course... When he tells him, I'm going to kill you, and he goes full black and white and just starts beating ass, it's amazing. <laughs> it's a satisfying beatdown as he just completely punches him. And I love that reveal where he's like, oh, whatever, you can't damage my soul. And then he goes like, oh, no. Now that I think about it, he is technically two souls. This might be the only person who can kill me. 
this is bad. <laughs> yeah, like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. This is problematic. <laughs> Two steps away from going, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> getting completely destroyed. Oh, I completely forgot. This is the episode where Sukuna uh, gives Mahito the don't ever fucking touch my soul again speech, which is really good. Yes, because doesn't he also say, like, I couldn't remember if it was this episode or the next one, um, when he subbed, because he does try and do the transfiguration, but then he goes like, hey man, I know we were just having a laugh, so I'm gonna give you a warning, don't ever fucking do that again. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, like, yeah, we were, I was being, I'm gonna be nice to you, because you were making fun of this kid with me, but, uh, if you ever fucking do this again, I'll kill you. Yes, which is really good. <laughs> that is a very good way of going, like, ah, oh, yeah. There's a lot of good uh, Sukuna stuff in in this episode, for sure. Even if it's only for brief glimpses, it really helps kind of show how much of a evil man this guy is. And yeah, and I really like the fight. I really like the flashes of him thinking about how his life could have been together if they had all gone to the same Jujutsu High. And I like that he also starts just headbutting and just back. Again, I really like dudes whose main gimmick are I have fists, let's go. And Yuji has that in spades. <laughs> he has yes. all of it. It's so good. So, yeah, I really like this episode. And I really like the setup that they've gone here. And I like the fight that's going on here. And yet just continues to be some mm, good stuff. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, really good. This whole section of the fight, like at the school, it's fucking peak. 10 mm. out of 10. Yeah. I masterclass. Agree. Some good stuff. I can't believe that I actually saw recently someone was complaining about the way Jujutsu Kaisen looks in their fights. And after seeing these episodes, I'm like, I don't know where the fuck you're coming from. If this isn't good enough for you, what the fuck do you want? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I, God, I fucking love this. Yeah, it's so good. 100%. Oh, and yeah, again, nothing better than when the MC gets super fucking angry. And they do a real good job of showing him angry with the one eye looking, going, nah, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you're you're not human. You're dead. <laughs> Go. But yeah, that's episode 12. Let us move on to episode 13. Tomorrow. Tell us about the 13th episode, Zen. Episode 13. We have the battle starting to begin and Nanami is like, alright, we need to kind of do this as a team here. Um, Mahito realizes they're going to try to like flank him, and so he makes an eye in one of his hands, because Mahito's fucking gross and nasty and I hate him. Mm -hmm. um, they start fighting one another. Uh, and they, they kind of hit him from both sides and he avoids the attack by turning into a little a little baby version of himself. He's like a little a little <laughs> baby man. Uh, and he runs out. And then he returns himself back to normal because he realizes in that tiny body, Yuji could just kill him because he's so small and like weak. Oh, wouldn't that be um, great though? My MC oh, kills my. a baby. <laughs> if only beats a baby to death. Um, Singular punch. So he decides to split them up by sending... Uh, transfigured humans after Yuji, and he fights Nanami one on one, thinking that he'll get rid of Nanami first because Yuji won't be willing to kill the humans. Um, they fight for a minute, and he's kind of right that like Yuji doesn't want to kill them. Before he eventually kind of comes to grips with it, and he does. Uh, he ends up rescuing Nanami, who's a few moments away from losing the one on one, uh, and then they start fighting again. And we get that amazing scene where they're just beating the absolute piss out of Nanami or out of uh, Maito mm -hmm. back and forth. <laughs> they're just absolutely fucking him up together. <laughs> um, and he realizes that as he's getting his shit rocked, uh, that he could actually die here. Like that, that he just can't do anything. Uh, and this pushes him to awaken his own domain expansion. Um, he makes sure to trap Yuji outside the barrier because he doesn't want to piss off Sukuna. And so he's got Nanami alone inside the barrier. And it turns out that his ability is basically just a guaranteed immediate win. Because Nanami, or uh, Mahito's ability, I keep calling him Nanami. Mahito's ability is just, if I touch your soul, you're, I can do whatever I want. And if you're inside his barrier, he's always touching your soul. Like, no matter what. It's essentially always on. Uh, but this ends up coming back to bite him. Because 
uh, UG busts into the barrier from the outside because domain expansion barriers by design are extremely hard to get out of if you're inside of them, but extremely easy to get into if you're outside of them because why would you ever want to do that? <laughs> it's like the reason. <laughs> um, once he busts through, Mahito touches uh, Sukuna's soul again because... If you're inside Mahito's domain, that's always happening, like no matter what, so you can't stop it from happening. Uh, Sukuna gets pissed off and uses his attack to place a giant gash into Mahito's chest. Um, Yuji attacks, and Mahito kind of turns into like a big old balloon to avoid it, but it ends up being a distraction uh, for him to get away. He ends up escaping into the sewer, and before they're able to chase him, uh, uh, Yuji finally passes out from the fact he's very heavily injured from all the blows that he had been taking from both Junpei and Mahito. Um, Mahito realizes that, like, Sukuna is the real deal. Like, this, this man is a beast, but I can't fuck with him. I think he even says, like, I'm pretty sure Jogo, in terms of, like, raw power, is stronger than him right now, but... <laughs> Holy shit, there's some, something about him. He really is him. Um, they do end up recovering. Yuji and Nanami kind of have this conversation. Um, and they kind of, he kind of is like, you know, Yuji's feeling down because he killed people. And he's like, you know, I didn't, I don't want to kill people and I don't. He, he's kind of wavering in what his belief system is because up to this point he's been saying, like, I want people to die a proper death where they can be happy, you know, with the way that they lived. But, you know, what what about what I just did is for that. And then Nanami kind of gives him a little a little pep talk. And he's like, you know, one, I acknowledge you as a sorcerer. And two, like, you you took those lives and you saved other lives. Like it's a it's it's a constantly changing world. You know, you can't you can't guide people toward the same end goal because everyone's life and everyone's death is the same. Um we see that the school, in the wake of Junpei's like massacre, basically, uh, implements strict anti-bullying policies. The teacher uh, takes his own flack for it and says that he he failed Junpei, but uh, he's not going to sit around and let this bullying happen anymore. Um, and then Gojo comes back in, and they kind of meet. All they all meet back up together. And Yuji declares that he doesn't want to lose anymore after losing, in his view, to Mahito this time. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of the episode, except for, of course, the Juju Stroll, which has them eating the hot pot. And I think they talk about how easy it is. To, I think they talk about meatballs, a very specific way, but then Yuji is the one who taught him how to do it. And then they both get sad because he goes like, oh, yeah. Nobra calls the meatballs his legacy, and then it just makes both of them <laughs> sad. And then yeah. goes 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 to Yuji, who's eating the, who's also making hot pot with Gojo, and he goes like, <laughs> he sneezes, he goes like, huh, weird. But then uh, Gojo says, these are some great uh, meatballs. He's like, oh yeah, they're so easy, and even Megami can make them. <laughs> uh huh, <laughs> which was funny. Yeah, really good. All right. Let's talk about episode 13. Here's what I feel about it. I put no notes down because I was just enjoying fucking watching it. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, obviously, that beatdown that he has, if you've gone anywhere on Twitter, you've obviously seen anyone point... Anytime someone's getting posted up <laughs> or getting double teamed, this always shows up. It's so good. This ass beating is so well-deserved from this guy. 100%. Um... I really like the stuff where... So you start to see a little bit about, like, what... Because Nanami talks about, like, he was a Jujutsu sorcerer, and then he stopped being one, and then he went back to one. And he said kind of as a joke, he's like, the Jujutsu sorcerers were shit, so I quit my job. And I got a real job, but then my job was shit, so then I quit that. <laughs> yeah, which was really funny. <laughs> and here you get to see him Jesus a little bit. Sorcerers are shit, but then working is shit. So, yep. And then you get to see his actual frame of mind of what happened. And basically, he talks about like how 
eventually he got really good at making rich people richer, but that didn't really help anyone at all. And he actually yeah, felt it like, wasn't fulfilling, basically. No. And he compared it to someone who was working at a bakery shop who was dealing with... Um, she also had like a tiny curse of some kind, but it wasn't any that was actually in any danger. But she was also making people happy by giving them bread, and he realized like... Um, what I'd want to do is I don't want to make rich people rich. I want to try and make people happy like how she does. Because all she's doing is giving bread, but that's enough. And so he ends up just, he ends up quitting his job. He goes back to the bakery. He exercises the roach from her. And then he calls Gojo up and says, like, I want to basically return as a Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> I want to return to the show Jujutsu Kaisen. No, he just decides to be a Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> I would like to be in the program again. <laughs> Put me back in, coach. And he's also thinking all this when he's pretty sure he's going to die because he's been basically checkmated by the domain expansion. So it's kind of nice to see him. He also like takes off his sunglasses. He's just 100% ready to go like, eh, I had a good run. I had a good Yeah, he's fully like, I I, I'm a, I lose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. Me. I guess I lose. No regrets for me. Do whatever. And then that's when Yuji breaks in, which is really funny when they were be like, no one would ever be stupid enough to <laughs> break into a domain expansion. But he is, and thankfully that saves the day because then Sukuna gets woken up and he's like, uh-uh, I don't care. I don't want to hear the explanations. Fucking die. <laughs> yeah, because Sukuna, again, is him. So he simply does not care. Nope, doesn't care. He's like, I warned you once. Okay, but the situation, dead, don't care, <laughs> didn't ask. You would have to have figured out a way to not touch my soul that way. Uh, so that was great. And yeah, I really like his like realization of him going like, oh yeah, he's the guy who can bring back the curses, even if the other one is stronger at the moment. He's just something about this guy. <laughs> this fucking guy. Yeah, this, is just... this fucking guy. <laughs> he's so good. Um, and yeah, I really like the stuff where Yuji's talking to Nanami about, like, I just don't feel right. Just, this entire situation kind of sucked, and I don't know how to process it, because I've, I've gone through a lot, and he's dealing with a loss, and he's dealing with the fact that not only did he lose, but he also had to kill innocent people, and that's just, like, a compounding, like, he wouldn't feel better if he had won, but at least he could have said... You know, at least I was able to get rid of the person who did this to you. But he wasn't even able to do that. It was just a straight up loss, no matter how much you look at it. Um, a tie in this case is still a loss because he <laughs> he can continue doing what he needs to with the evil shit that he done. So it was nice hearing him talk and kind of like tell him like, listen, man, you did what you could. And I think that's good enough for now. Like you shouldn't feel too bad about it. And you can be a sorcerer in my eyes. And yeah, and also like kind of showing back the the bullying and kind of people starting to be like taking at least trying to seeing clear the the actions of what happens when you don't actually try and stop people who are doing evil things and just kind of allowing things to continue as they are is that things will just get worse and then you'll have a reckoning of some kind and you'll just be left in the wake and then all you can really do is kind of try and pick up the pieces from that point. So the teacher realizes, no, I fucked up and I'm going to also get what's coming to me, but we both have to kind of see this as a way of like atoning basically. Because even the bully's really fucked up and he's like, it's kind of fucked up that I'm he's basically like in a slingshot he's completely fucked up and he's still going to be punished but he's like no man you <laughs> you're in this situation because of what you did and i should have been there to stop it but we weren't so we're just gonna have to learn from this and kind of move on from life from that point on so it was kind of nice to see at least obviously we probably don't see whatever happens to him because there's a lot to keep track of with jujitsu but it's a, it's nice to at least see like the life that the, these people went, all the shit that they went through, they're going to have to try and continue living their life. And there are, is at least some form of justice for Junpei in that they at least acknowledge that, like, no, he only was this way because we pushed him to be this way. So we're at as 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 at, as at fault at this as he was because we should have never let it get to this far. And if it would have honestly been easily stopped if someone had acknowledged that they weren't friends or had said... I saw this or then stuff like that. So 
really cool. And this was a good ending to this specific arc here. And yeah, really fucking good stuff. I can see why. This is definitely still one of my favorite arcs from Jujutsu Kaisen. Especially watching this back and seeing it animated and seeing all this. I can see why Like I was just like non-stop reading and waiting week to week to see where it goes from this point on. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely the hook arc. Like, if you're not into it now, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. If you're not into it at this point, then I don't know what to, to tell you, man. Uh, yeah, they even have, like, a little insert song as well. I forgot about that. But they do have one of those. From when he's uh, made his decision. I think it's Stand... Is it Stand in Darkness? It's the one right before when he's like, it's near close to the end. Not actually the, yeah, I think it is. Okay, I'm going to go with that. It's Stand in Darkness. Either way, it's really good. Really well done. Great episode. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, again, amazing episode. Fantastic resolution to the, all the Mahito stuff. The the arc at hand. Uh, goddamn, man. 10 out of 10. Perfect. perfect. I have nothing to say because there's nothing to say. Watch yeah. it perfection just yes yeah, straight up watch it you can just tell based on the fact that i didn't even write down notes because i was just watching that's all that needs to be said <laughs> is when you just gotta sit down and watch that's it uh-huh. <laughs> nothing more to say all right let's move on to episode 14 before we do that uh-huh the season two pv of jujutsu kaisen was just released including information on who is going to be voicing the new characters? Literally? Guess who is voicing? Yeah, literally right now. Who is voicing uh, Toji Fushiguro? Uh, you know for a fact that if I have this much trouble saying names, I'm not going to be able to, <laughs> to know who is it. It is Takahiro Koyasu. Do you know who that is? Uh, no, who is it? That is Dio. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Really? Uh, assuming that this is a uh, trustworthy source, because it is a Jutsu Kaisen leaker that is posting this information right now. Um, but uh, yeah, it is wow. Dio Brando. Fucking let's go. <laughs> now I'm more excited. For we really need to finish time. So that if anything, for so I can watch it while it's going on. <laughs> That's great. Anything else? Or is that just uh, that did for now? Uh, Takahiro Sakurai is going to continue voicing Ghetto. There were some concerns that he would be fired. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, because he has not been. Okay. Interesting. And then the obviously the the big thing is that the PV is out. It's it's a full on trailer. Uh, and it looks really good. It's really fucking good. <gasps> I'll save the trailer for after we're done with this. It's a shame because uh, I would gladly show it up there, but then there's a good chance of my channel just getting hit by the get copyright. Yep, yeah, one hundred percent. Zap. Yeah, the, they don't play a fucking around at all when it comes to this. But that's cool. It's good to hear some new. Do they have a date yet, or is it still just like sometime twenty twenty three? Uh, July, I believe. July. Oh fuck. That means we have March. April, May, June, June. Okay, we have yeah, that's enough time. Almost four months. Ooh, but about then, that, yeah. Yeah, but then, then I have a vacation near the end of July. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> we should be able to catch up in time. All right, that's cool. Anything else from the from the live breaking news from? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, other than the trailer, which we'll probably have to watch and talk about. And also, if you haven't seen it yet, the uh, the new key visual as well that came out today. Okay, cool, cool, great, man. Okay, now let's legitimately go to episode fourteen. So before we actually start with the episode, because I usually always forget it if we wait till the end. The episode thirteen is the last episode that has um, the opening song and the ending song. So that's the end of OP1 and ED2. Yes, and E1. Kai Kai Katan is over. Uh, yes. We are in... Oh, shit. What's the second one called? Uh, vivid Vice. Vivid Vice. That's what it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, are, we are in Vivid Vice now. 
And Lost in Paradise has been replaced with uh, Give It Back. We're here for the more. It's the it's the serious change up because that's what I realize is that the second OP is always yes. a serious one. <laughs> OP and DD are always a super serious one. Uh, and both of them are pretty good. I, it's actually been a bit since I've seen it. I, it's going to take me a while to get over the fact that I'm not going to be hearing Lost in Paradise at the end anymore because that's a really good song. Yes, it is. Do you know they pulled that off of like the internet for a while because the one of the people making it uh, did weed. Had some had some pot action going on. Really, from the singer from Lost in Paradise. From Lost in Paradise, yeah. Which in Japan is like a, you've committed a mortal sin against God if you do that. So they like no, it's nuke true. All their stuff. Yeah, they 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 cut you immediately. I know this because of the multiple actors that have been replaced in Yakuza for being caught with cocaine. They <laughs> they really don't want to catch you with any form of drug on you. <laughs> they will gladly toss you to the curve the second it happens. So, man, so, man. Does that mean that, it, it obviously, it's back now, but there was just a couple weeks there where it, it just didn't end with Lost in Paradise? No, 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 it did in the show. This happened after the show, when they were, like, putting the music up on the internet and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, they pulled it. They put it up, and then they pulled it. Ooh, that sucks. Because this is a really good song. It is a really good song. And thankfully, it is back. But that's, you know, that's silly. They should be like us and just kind of accept the fact that sometimes people <laughs> that you don't necessarily agree with what they do make really good songs. <laughs> Even though, again, weed is not that big of a deal, to us at least. That's nothing. It's legal over here. Who cares? As far as I as a boy, <laughs> as far as, uh, Shonen Archive is concerned, we're taking the stand of who cares <laughs> when it becomes yep. worth smoking weed. Who cares even a little bit? Exactly. Come back to me when you're on a real drug, when you're on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of that, let's talk about episode 14. <laughs> Perfect segue. Exactly. I'm the master of them, baby. Kyoto Sister School Goodwill Event Team Battle Part Zero. All right, now we're getting to the long ass title. <laughs> yeah, it's time. It tells In anime tradition. Yes, it is, 100%. Tell us what it's about, Zen. Episode 14, we are uh, starting out with the Curse family. They're hanging out. Maito's talking about all this stuff, and they're kind of making a plan. That's like, shouldn't I have, uh, you know, taken a hostage or whatever to force Sukuna to make the agreement? And Ghetto's like, nah, you have to, you have to do a vow willingly. Or it won't work. Plus, Sukuna's just kind of a douche, so he wouldn't work with you anyway. Don't worry about it. It's all fine. Um, eventually, they decide they're going to go attack Jujutsu High to get the fingers that they have there. Um, so that they can reclaim them from the school. We cut back to Gojo and Nanami, and Gojo's just being a general irritant. Saying a bunch of dumb stuff. Um, <laughs> drinking game name things you love about Gojo yeah name things you love about me uh, again really funny when you consider how much he, the author just hates this man yeah it, it, you can tell that the author is trying to make him like not like, like he's trying to make him annoying and he's yeah. trying to make people go like wow I hate this guy but everyone loves him yeah it's just so going that, like oh silly <laughs> silly Gojo uh, silly Gojo <laughs> Uh um, I'm going, fuck these they, fucking people. They decide that they're gonna bring Yuji back with a uh a plan where he's gonna jump out and surprise everyone. Um <laughs> really good by plan. like the by the he's gonna give them all gifts and he's the gift to the Tokyo students is gonna be Yuji Stolak. Um Nobara is over there, wondering why they don't have any luggage, and it's like, we're not... The event's in Tokyo, it's not... It's not in Kyoto, they're coming here, and she gets all pissed off. Yeah, with Kyoto, uh, not in Kyoto. Yeah, not in Kyoto. Uh, the Kyoto students end up arriving, and Gojo shows up late, and he's giving out little, like, dolls to the Kyoto students, and then uh, he opens the little thing that Yuji is in, who jumps out, Um and he's like, I'm alive! And he's annoyed that everyone's, like, horrified. He's like, oh, no. Because <laughs> um, they're all, like, they look pissed. Um, 
the he's like sad because his friends don't seem to like be happy and then the Kyoto students aren't even looking like they're not paying him any attention at all um and then the principal is pissed and Gojo's like yeah I figured out your plan you old man fuck you <laughs> um they he Yuji like rejoins everyone as they start to strategize uh and they don't know what to do about Toto and then Megami says an extremely badass thing about Yuji which is if every single person here fought him and did not use curse energy, he would win against everyone all at once. <laughs> um, there's that a really funny line where Maki's like, hey, give me back that sword you were using. It's mine. G- Gojo borrowed it. And he's like, ah, because it broke. <laughs> and I think he says that Gojo has it still. Yeah, I think he, he lies and says Gojo still has it. He does lie. He doesn't want to tell um, her that it's broken. <laughs> And then uh, the principal tells them, that the, the Kyoto students, that they need to kill Yuji. But Toto basically says, like, don't fucking tell me what to do. I'll do whatever I want. And he storms out. Um, Megami kind of pulls Yuji off. And he's like, hey, dude, like, I can tell some shit went down. Like, you 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 don't look right. Like, what's going on? And Meg- Yuji's like, I'm, I'm okay. But uh, I want to win from now on. And Megami's like, all right, let's also win. Uh, and they do the exact same pose they do in the manga, which is cool. Everyone like kind of stances up, and they're like, let's do it. And then uh, Maki kicks Yuji in the back, and she's like, you, who who made you the leader? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and then the episode ends. Really good. And then we have the Juju Stroll, which has... I don't remember what this one was. A man tells a woman that he should go with Takeda is doing... Something about a sushi shop. I don't fully remember what this one is. Uh, I don't remember this one either. Reading it. No, yeah, I don't remember this one at all. <laughs> Even reading the the look back is like, this happened? I don't remember any of this. No, uh... No, I don't remember anything about this. Happening. Oh yeah, it's Toto's watching it on the. Uh, that's TV. right. Now I remember. It's yeah. because they're going. That's right. Because he, the reason that he wants the meeting to end is like, I need to go watch. Because he it. wanted to go watch. He wanted to go record the show. He's yeah. like, and he's like, it's recording. He's like, a true fan watches both. <laughs> yeah, he's like a true fan would. Uh, I'm gonna watch it live and record it. Yes, that's right. That's what he's doing. And then one, and she gets progressively drunker, and then he goes like, "You tell him that's my that's my." T- <laughs> now I remember. That's funny. <laughs> now I remember. <laughs> and then he like walks past him and does all that. Yeah, yeah, Gojo and Yuji walk past, and they're talking about their uh, plan, like what what OPP means, because that's what Yuji says when he comes out of the thing. That's right. And then it stands for Ocean Pacific Peace. Okay, now I remember. Okay. <laughs> like, let's start with this one. Uh, this is a very good episode. Um, I like seeing the dudes kind of come back. The cursed guys kind of get together and kind of form of like, uh, so yeah, we really got our shit kicked in on this one, huh? <laughs> we really kind of... Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were... Shit didn't go so great. No. Also, I think that Sugano guy is kind of an asshole, so I'm not sure he would actually work with us. <laughs> So there's a lot. So and then finally, I think he goes like, "So now are you gonna go with my plan? <laughs> the thing I wanted to do from the start, which was just lock up um, Gojo." And I think they're finally going to like, "Yeah, we kind of have to do this." <laughs> I don't think there's any choice here. We should have done. We should have just went from the plan from the start instead of getting our asses kicked <laughs> for the entirety of it. Um, again, that bit there, of course, with Gojo where he's uh fucking around with Nanami is really funny because I really do like how they're basically the exact opposite of each other. How much of it must have it annoyed Nanami to have to call Gojo to say, like, I want to go back to being a Jujutsu <laughs> sorcerer? Yeah, he probably hated it. Probably Absolutely. Really you, you can tell how much he was just fed up with what he was doing if he was willing to call up this man who is obviously his exact opposite in so many ways and also extremely annoying <laughs> to him. The only person who is not amused... Well, there's plenty of people, actually, because the old man also is not amused with his antics. But someone yeah. who's uh, on his side and also doesn't find him very funny. <laughs> it's really good. Um, I liked, obviously, the bit with Yuji, where he's like, 
because uh, not only when he reveals them, because when they try and think about like, oh yeah, you're gonna, this is going to be such a good idea, like the way that they hype themselves up into thinking that this is actually going to be the perfect way of reintroducing someone who has died beforehand <laughs> is going to be a good idea is pretty funny. But then it turns out obviously that no, this is a, you should have just said something because now everyone <laughs> seems to not like you. At this moment, and then also the people on the other side are so distracted by their gifts that he brought in that they don't even care who he is. So the only people that really seem to give any form of attention to him are his friends who are horrified. And the old man. Yeah, and the old man who's pissed off about it. Yeah. Because he's basically, which is also really funny because it's really just Gojo just like trolling this old man. Like, oh yeah, real good idea there. Too bad that he's alive. <laughs> Not even stopping to think like the reason that he would be alive would be actually the reason why this old man would be terrified. <laughs> Cause it would mean that uh probably Sukuna helped him come back alive in some way. But anyway. Uh them meeting up is really good when he's like talking to all of them. I really like how Megami kind of builds him up, because it's really funny when you consider one of the other dudes is also a panda and when he talks about like he could beat him <laughs> a panda fist fighting yeah in a, in a brawl with no energy he could just beat the giant panda yeah that really is a good way to hype someone up for sure and i also liked him kind of just uh meeting these dudes and kind of interacting with them the sword bit was really funny uh, him trying to come to terms with how does this guy who only talks in like salmon roll actually function <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh is that I how it works it. yeah so that was really good and it's a good like setup for what we're about to see and also the setup that he's going to be the one that's going to be fighting uh the big uh brawny man next also seems pretty fun so good setup here for sure this is all what this is is 100 percent setup but i think it's good setup for what's coming up how do you feel zen agree it's funny it's really funny when uh He's like sitting there, uh, and he's not, uh, Nova is making him hold the funeral picture over his face, <laughs> and he's like, "This is kind of fucked up, guy." <laughs> that is funny. It's really funny. Uh, the whole thing is good. I like when he's like trying to figure out what um, what everyone is. He's like getting speed introduced to the three other Tokyo students who we already know. Mm-hmm. That's good. There's a lot of good bits here. And now, let's move on. I can't believe we actually ended it on another one where it's like technically a half-parter, because this is a the, another case where we said like the five-episode break is really troublesome for both Kuroko and Jujutsu, because we always stop it just before the big thing is about to happen. Yeah. And this is one of them. So, episode 15, Kyoto Sister School, Goodwill Event, Team Battle, Part 1. That was all set up here, baby. This is where the Part 1 starts. <laughs> Tell us what happens then in episode 15. Episode 15, we start the event. Gojo is talking, and he's, like, giving them the, the starting speech. And then he randomly gives it to Udihime, and he's like, all right, you talk. And he's like, uh... This was really funny. And then as soon as she starts trying to give some advice, he cuts her off. <laughs> Such an asshole. Such an asshole. Um, so they both rush in. The goal here is to exercise the grade 2 curse inside the forest somewhere. Um, Maki reminds everyone to follow the plan. Toto appears and he says he's going to fight all of them alone. But Yuji jumps quickly and knees him straight in the face, and everyone splits off, which was their original plan, is as soon as Toto appears, Yuji is going to fight him and just let uh, the rest get away and accomplish the goal. Uh, they fight, and Toto punches him like straight through a bunch of trees, and he's like, holy shit, and he, he like punches through a cursed spirit uh, on the way. And he worries that if he if that had hit him straight on without the spirit's body there to uh, save it, um, it would have like really fucked him up. They start fighting a little bit, and he he starts stomping on uh, Yuji's head, and then Yuji ends up getting up and saying, 
stop kicking me in the head, you're going to make me even dumber. <laughs> um, so he asks Yuji what type of women that he likes, and Yuji says a tall girl with a big butt, which is also um, Toto's preference. And he has like this fucking life-changing moment where he he starts having false memories of him and Yuji in school together and him getting rejected by Takata who is uh, at their school in this alternate reality um and Yuji's like his best friend helping him cope with getting rejected when he asked her out uh and so he starts calling Yuji his best friend and he starts <laughs> telling him the story of like ah we were best buddies back in our old hometown no one could beat us we were the best and he starts crying. And you're just like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Um, all the rest of the Kyoto students show up and start attacking him. Uh, and he realizes that the team is trying to kill him. But Toto ends up saving him. And he tells them all to go away. To leave uh, them to fight alone. And if they don't, he'll kill them. Eventually, they all reluctantly leave. They're like, we don't really want to do that, but we, because, you know, they told us to kill him, but we don't have a choice because Toto is making us. Um, and they start going to fight again. We start cutting to the other students. Um, Megami knocks out Momo for a minute. Um, they all kind of split off, and then Megami and Maki jump. Um, jump Noritoshi, and they start fighting. Panda starts kind of moving off to find Mechamaru, and they leave Inamaki to find the curse on his own. The plan is just to let Inamaki handle the actual goal, and the rest of them are going to interfere with the other team. Um, Megami is fighting Noritoshi, and they kind of have this bit of like, oh, you know, we're both... We're both, uh, you know family sorcerers from these big important families and all this stuff then we cut back to Toto and Yuji who are fighting and he tells Yuji that his the way that he fights is wrong because he's letting his cursed energy flow incorrectly and it's basically like stunting his growth like he's not going to get better that way um, eventually they kind of figure out that the Kyoto students were going to kill Yuji and then Maki realizes that Toto is the reason why that it saved him. Um, eventually, they're like, yeah, you know, that's that's true. They did say that. We didn't really have a choice in it. We're sorry. We don't really want to do it either. Um, and then Toto and Yuji have this moment where Yuji says, no matter what happens, he's, he refuses to be weak anymore. So he's going to learn how to fight the right way. And then Toto's like, yes, th that's it. And then they go to, to continue fighting one another and helping Yuji grow at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Juju Stroll, which is this time they're asking the female characters, what kind of person is your type? Mai says, that, Maki says it's someone stronger than her. Mai gives no answer. Uh, Nobara says, I can't stand a UBSSD, a useless, broke, smelly, stingy, dead, which is basically just Hasegawa, just a new mod. Yeah. <laughs> just a Madao. Madao, 100%. Um, Momo says, Sebastian Stan. <laughs> and uh, Sumi describes a hot guy who's fun around and makes her feel like she's the only one for her. And then they ask Gojo, and he's like, wasn't there a girl with bangs who was really nice? And Utahime, then he's like, he eventually figures out, it's like, oh, my type is Kasumi, <laughs> the one that likes me. <laughs> She's nice, <laughs> which is pretty funny. He's like, well, who's the one person who actually kind of puts up with my shit? She's good. <laughs> yeah, That's it's my... funny that yeah, Gojo's type is people who tolerate him. Yep, understandable. <laughs> people who like him a lot. <laughs> they have so much in common. They both really like him. Uh, okay, this episode, really good. This is the beginning of, of what is a beautiful bromance here between two bros learning to be a bro through fisting and learning that they both really like tall women with <laughs> huge asses. <laughs> Which is also something Yuji says, because I'm really curious about what Japan feels about, about her, because he says, like Jennifer Lawrence, 
And every time he's ever mentioned Jennifer Lawrence, it really makes me go like, is that what I would consider Jennifer Lawrence? Yeah, not really. I mean, maybe for like a Japanese point of view. From a Japanese point of view, she's definitely a tall woman because technically Japan is uh, slightly smaller. So they have her on that. And in terms of the big butt, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not, I haven't looked at it recently. So I wouldn't know. And especially given the time that this was gone through, I'm not 100% sure. But maybe it's pretty big by the standards of Japan. But it is funny to see like, oh yeah, like Jennifer Lawrence. Which makes me feel like it's like looking into the mind of Japan. It goes like, what do you consider <laughs> tall and giant ass? <laughs> now to be fair to uh, Ayui, uh, his... His preferred type is actually because the Takata Chan is actually both of those things. She is very tall and she does have a very big butt, so it fits. I'm not here to t- attack Jennifer Lawrence, though. I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm not saying that she does, has a inefficient. I actually don't know if she has a big butt or not. Uh, yeah, I'm so honest. enamored by but, her acting performance that I don't look at that direction. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't watch movies she's in. Um, but like, really, you've never seen a Jennifer? You didn't see? Uh, no, you've X-Men seen X-Men. the only. X-Men's the only ones I've seen, really, that have heard. Like, I didn't watch The Hunger Games or any of that. Um, now we're going to have to look up something. I didn't watch that one movie with uh, Chris Pratt that's, like, the creepy Oh, the movie creepy where sleep. he, like, <laughs> he said, we're sleeping in space and I'm waking passengers. you up against your will movie. They said, Sleeping um, Beauty isn't creepy enough. Can we make it creepier? And they made Can we passengers. make it worse? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Red Sparrow. You've never seen Hunger Games. <laughs> Nope. You've never seen Silver Pretty Linings Playbook. To be fair, she's not really throwing it back in Silver Linings Playbook. <laughs> so it's not like you can... <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, like, if, if an actress has a what I would qualify as, a, as an American man, uh, a big butt, Twitter mm-hmm. would have told me about it by now. It's true. And Jennifer Lawrence has not happened that way, so... No, it's typically, again, not... We're mostly focused on her acting. <laughs> when it comes to that and the fact that man they really can't she really did not want to be at those in those x-men movies huh but <laughs> when she got big after hunger games get made a lot of movies they're like man she really doesn't want to be mystique no more <laughs> that's about as yeah. far as we got well i mean i remember that she said she had like an allergic reaction to the body paint too which like, uh, I get that's that. fair i don't want to be doing that anymore like know. Because it's got to suck to have to get your entire body painted blue, and then also it, like, inflames your skin. Oh, you know It's got to be a nightmare. Yeah, and if she is, as we've said in Japan, said have a big butt, that would result in a humongous, too big at that point. Not not very good. Not no good. (laughs) So, yeah. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Maybe he only saw her recently after she got body painted. (laughs) He's like, damn, girl. (laughs) She was inflamed. Yeah, and he's like, holy shit. It's like, um, you remember, do you remember that episode of King of the Hill where um, Conan sees uh, Dee Dee's butt through the a glass window? Where it's like it's like through a, a jar, so it looks humongous. He's like, I'm sorry I ever said your butt was small. In fact, it's too big. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll continue on with this. But feel free to tell us what you feel about Jennifer Lawrence. Be as respectful as possible <laughs> when talking about her. <laughs> show the same level that we've given here obviously uh but yeah obviously, this, nothing obviously but respect nothing but respect for her obviously yuji big fan of her obviously <laughs> and i really did like that entire scenario that they had in their head where it's like oh yeah we we're best buddies and we were doing all this and you really helped me get through this breakup because you know it's not easy to just confess your feelings in such a manner <laughs> it's really good and also really like when they're like, are you trying to kill him? When he's just like immediate, because his immediate response was like, we need you to kill him. He's like, don't ever try and tell me to what to do or I'll kill you instead. Yeah. I love that he's just like this ultimate like um, X factor where he's just like, you can't actually, he's so good at what he does, which is fucking dudes up that he has to be on the team. But also, if you're trying to get him to do anything specific, you're in for a bad time. And now that he's actively in uh, bros with this guy, it's actually worse if they did anything to him. Because he would immediately fuck them up. So now it's another thing to go in there. Um, I like how quickly they realize, like, oh yeah, these guys are not trying to catch this curse at all. They are, in fact, just trying to kill Yuji. <laughs> it comes becomes mm-hmm. very obvious. It's like, oh yeah, they're just going to go try and kill him. So we need to actually hang back and get this back here 
And yeah, I really like the start of all this. It's a good setup. I can't wait to see more. Obviously, this is just part one. But I really like all the things that they've done here, including them saying like, yo, your divergent fist, it it's not it's not there, man. You need to do this shit right. And you need <laughs> you need my help to help you. And the immediate switch back from like it's like uh the you know how the Naruto pipeline exists where Naruto, if he can't beat you, he'll become friends with you. Mm-hmm. This is like if mid fight Gara was just like, yo, Naruto, <laughs> you're a good, you're my bro. We've been for so yeah. much. <laughs> it's hey, bro. Yeah, we gotta do this together, man. We have we share so much in common. <laughs> so yeah, real good. Can't wait to see really more funny. of it. And I thought it was good. What do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it's really good. I like uh, this arc is not. Um as popular as the last one for obvious reasons yeah um i really like this arc i think it's very good i really enjoy the uh the little kind of tournament aspect they have going here i really like uh everything toto does because he's fucking funny um it's really good it's really good Mm-hmm. and we will have to see m- more of this in the next in two weeks from now when we get back for some jujutsu kaisen so next week we will be going through episodes sixteen, yes, yeah, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty, and then we'll only have one more episode of season one of Jujutsu Kaisen, which will cover twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, and then we will be doing the movie by itself, and anything that comes up for season two sporadically as we kind of go through stuff we'll also talk about that um when it comes up but yeah and then we'll be done with jujutsu kaisen basically and then we'll have to find season two yeah then we'll have to find something to fill the gaps in between then uh which it will either be us starting to go through the backlogs of things we know are bad (laughs) or we'll figure out something I'll find something for us to watch that should help us wait for Jujutsu Kaisen and stuff like that. Or maybe something really small. We'll figure it out. But, yeah. We're getting through there. I can't wait to see some of the ending stuff of here, too. Because, like I said, it's been a yes, while since the I've ending seen... episodes are super good of season one. Yeah, I can't wait to see some more of that. Because, like I've said, it's been a very long time since I've read this. Since, basically, it came out or was originally translated... Because I think actually back in the day when the Shonen Jump uh, app was out, the start of the next fight between Nobra and the Witch Lady, that's where it actually started. Like you had like chapters 1, 2, and 3 of Jujutsu Kaisen and then it jumped immediately to that one. That was your next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. That was that huge God, that huge gap sucked for a really yeah, long time. Yeah, it did. Be thankful now that the gap does no no longer exist. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's so fucking popular now. Exactly, you couldn't make if that. There was still that gap; people would be losing their minds. Yeah, well, there was a br- the brief period where it was super popular, and that gap still existed, and it, people were like, "Hey, yo, what the fuck?" But that just goes to show you they really didn't expect it to catch on the way it did. They're like, "Oh no, we you know <laughs> we better get that shit updated S- quick." Just someone translate them. We actually never translated. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Get somebody that's... working overtime on this. Yeah, so someone's like, yo, this is really popular. Did we ever translate chapters uh, 4 through 39? And then someone goes like, no. Why not? You told us to skip that. No one did. This is an unpopular manga. No, there's no way the hell this is ever going to catch up. Those were your exact words to me. Oh, uh, well. You better get to translating them then, because now this thing is super hyper popular. Get to go or go to work. And that's how we're in the situation we're in now. So yeah, looking forward to that. Next week should be Kuroko's basketball though, which is also heading into some good stuff from what I remembered. But then two but then another week from there we'll continue on with some more Jujutsu Kaisen. So that's the end of the episode, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see some more Zenrot, you can go over to Zen's channel. We're showing it in chill where he does that. He has a good time. There's plenty of Zen videos that you can see in the background while you're waiting for more Shonen Archive. 
And if you want some more me videos and then some other Zen videos that are not on Zen's channel, because I'm actually the number one purveyor of Zen videos, <laughs> you might think that <laughs> it's true. I have the most Zen videos if you can now count everything, including streams at this point, I think. No, there's no way that I have more streams than you, right? Of <laughs> Do I have more streams of you than you have of you streaming? Oh, uh, probably not. No, okay. Unfortunately, we did lose the most important stream of yours, which was the... Uh, the are you talking about Kingdom Hearts 2? Uh, no Fat Chicks slash Blowjob City? <laughs> yes! Oh, man, I know. I don't know what happened to those. The, those so the saddest fun. lost media that you'll ever hear. <laughs> All we have is that brief clip that I made, and that's it. But it was a legendary stream if you were there. <laughs> it's so good. It's the greatest. There was that portion where I was literally just dying because we were in the world that never was and we were fighting those heartless and we just kept talking about Blowjob City for like 40 minutes and I couldn't progress because I couldn't (laughs) And then Vegeta got in there so it was really crazy. That stream is never going to be replicated because it's impossible. (laughs) No, we couldn't remake it if we tried. No, at this point, no. It's only in Legends and in that one video of mine where it does not capture the full breath. It's like the, the the Lost Scrolls. You'll never fully understand it unless you were there. But you can always uh, check out my channel, and then we'll hopefully get back to streaming pretty soon now that my arm is feeling a little bit better. Um, hopefully get through some Digimon World, and then if we can figure out a good day, maybe stream some fighting games as well now that I've bought Injustice 2 against my better judgment. Yes. And Marvel. <laughs> oh, we're in there. Oh, yeah, I got Marvel. I got some other ones. I'm going to think of, like, the best way to handle this is to actually make a roulette and start keeping track of who's actually winning. So we can actually add in ju- into fighting games that one of us is really good at, one of us is really bad at, and then finally one where it's just, like, the most random <laughs> fighting game that you can imagine, and both of us <laughs> are just going, like, well, I guess we'll try. Who's better at Sailor Moon, the fighting game? <laughs> Let's figure it out. I would be totally down for that. Yeah, we'll see. But definitely we would start with Injustice 2, just because we're both kind of hankering for some uh, for some stuff. I even made sure to get all the DLC, because it's actually very cheap right now. I've forgotten how many years it's been since Injustice 2 originally lo- launched. But it's been a very long time. So, it was all cheap. So that's awesome. And yeah, yeah- that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All good stuff coming forward. Uh, we will see you guys in the next video, wherever it may appear. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Say goodbye, Zen. See you later, everybody. Peace.